What's up, everyone? This is Mr. T coming at you from Portable 3, and I've got another coding video for you, one that I'm really excited about. We're going to do a Rover Story chase game today, all right? We're going to have a Dust Devil chasing Rez all around Mars, and the goal for Rez is to collect those moon rocks. He, he desperately needs those moon rocks because he wants to get back to Earth. So, He's going to have to work really hard to grab them, but there's going to be a tornado, a dust devil chasing him. And I really hope you enjoy this activity. I just want to give you a little quick lesson on coordinate directions, all right, or axes. So if you take a look at this background right now, you have an X axis that goes long ways and you have a Y axis that goes vertical horizontal or the horizon line that's where the sun sets vertical or up and down I think of a basketball player who's got a vertical he jumps or she jumps up and down all right another really easy way to remember vertical or uh, axes and this is what I've shown my students is that the y axis is long and the x axis is wide all right so the y axis goes up and down the sorry yeah the y axis is up and down the x axis is left and right this is going to be important today because we're going to be needing to put directions for our rover to move all right so let's go and add a code to the background okay but we need a background first. So why don't we grab something in outer space? Let's try the moon today. Why don't we do the moon just for fun today? I know it's not Mars, but let's go with it. All right. Okay. So on my background, I need to have a timer and I want to have a score. And we did this video before. All right. Shout out to those of you who watched the uh, catching coding video that I did because in that video I made a timer and I'm going to go through that timer one more time. Okay, so we're going to roll with a green flag to start off with. Okay, and we're going to make a variable. All right, and that variable is going to be called timer. Okay, and you can see right there I've got my timer that just popped up. So let's go to set, set timer right there, set timer to 30. Let's give 30 seconds for this game, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to roll with a repeat block. Now, again, we've already done this. So if you want a little more explanation or a different version of that explanation, go check out the other video. But for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to put a repeat 30. And then we're going to need to change here up, up here. We set our timer. Now we're going to change our timer. All right. And to change the timer, we're going to grab this change timer. Okay. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit here. There we go. So change timer and we want to count down. So instead of counting up, we want to count down. So what I've said, is when I hit the green flag, my timer is set to 30. Check out my timer right here, watch. See that, it just ran to 30, right? Set timer to 30, and then we're going to start at 30, decrease by negative one, so we're gonna drop from 30 to 29, and then we need to wait. We're going to use a wait block, that says wait one second and then repeat. So let's just read through this code. Start at 30, okay? Change timer by negative one. So we're gonna go to 29, wait one second and then repeat, go back up. Decrease from 29 to 28, wait one second. Do it again, 27, wait one second, 26, wait one second, 25, wait one second. And our timer is going to go from starting at 30. Watch my timer go. Start at 30, 
then decrease by one second each time. And then once it gets to zero, we stop it. All right. And that, my friends, is how you run a 30 second timer. That is a 30 second timer. Okay. Make sense? I hope so. Let's go and create my robot. All right. So we're going to leave this floating in the background. Stop. All right, we need a robot. Let's go and grab the hero, which, whoops, which is going to be Rez, okay? Now, which robot do we want to use? These are all kind of funky, eh? Let's go with that little green one. That green one looks really cool. So I've got my robot. I'm going to go to costumes, and I could choose that one. Or you know what? I'm going to go with this one because this one rolls on four legs or four wheels. It's kind of cool. Now, it's too big. It's like huge, right? So let's bring my rover down to 50, okay? So I've got my rover. You wanna change the color? Let's go here. Maybe you wanna change the wheel. I don't know, it's up to you. I'm gonna leave him as he is. I think he looks pretty cool. Okay, so let's make our rover move, okay? So we need our start block, capiche? And now what we're going to do is we're going to use a change block let's start with our x axes all right so change x change x so that means change x is going to go along the line so watch this all right now if we want them to go backwards let's use a negative 10 and that will go backwards all right forwards backwards and remember if i use the y block right here it's going to go up and my friend is going to go down right down right down see that that's how it works okay so we've got a change block and now we're going to do an if then statement this is really cool all right this repeat block is only one command so change x do it 10 times don't do anything else all right let's go let's go five change x do it five times don't do anything else so let's try something a little bit different let's do an if then statement let me give you an example with my kids i say to my son go your ball went across the street so the code is walk to the end of the driveway look both ways and cross the street. But if a car comes, then you have to do something else. And that if then statement is going to be a sensing block. Okay, so we're going to use this key button. And that says, if the right arrow is pressed, if the right arrow is pressed, then change x by 10. So I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to do another one except I'm going to do the left arrow and I want to change it by negative 10. Remember I said that before? So right, 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 right or positive, 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 negative, 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 negative. Okay let's go with my up and down block. All right so we're going to take this whole thing and duplicate it but watch this up arrow down arrow but we're going to not use the x we're going to use y change y up is change y by 10 down is change y by say it with me positive or negative negative positive or negative so see what i just did I've got four commands. I've got right, left, up, down, and I need a forever block. I need this just to continue forever and ever and ever and ever. And now, my friends, let's see if our guy is working. Look at that. We are geniuses. Right, positive, left, negative, up, positive, down negative we have a gaming controller you just made an xbox controller congratulations and then we have a controller built this is a pretty fast controller 
built for uh, res to fly around the screen. Now we're going to need res to catch something. So let's go ahead and get a moon rock or a fossil. Let's see, do they have fossil? No, they don't. Let's go with rock and we're going to throw a rock in here. Okay. Now the rock is not going to be gliding. The rock is going to be fixed in one place and res is going to have to run to that point. He's going to have to move up and over in order to catch that rock. Okay. Now, because we're on Mars, let's make the rock red. Let's go over here. Let's go with that. And let, nope, we don't want to use that. Let's have the rock. There you go. That's a, that's a pretty cool red rock. Let's make the bottom a little bit of a different color. like that and there we go all right cool so we got a red rock res is searching hunting for that red rock the rock's too big let's make the rock 50. okay and there we go now let's go ahead and build a code for this rock so let's grab that and let's give a variable so we're going to set score right Where's score? Oh, we haven't built a score one yet. Whoops, my bad. we got to build a score variable. There we go. Set score. Okay, so you can see score is up there, right there. And you can see timer is up there. So set score to zero. Whenever I hit the green flag, I want the score to reset to zero. The game begins. I don't want to start with five points. I want to start with zero points. And I want the timer to count down. Okay. And then we're going to do another one of those if then statements. So check this out. If the rock is touching, if the rock is touching the robot, retro robot, I got to change that name. If the rock is touching robot, okay. I want my rock to do two things. All right. So res, boom, res caught the rock. I want the rock to do two things. First thing is I want the rock to move. Okay. So go to a random position, go to a random spot somewhere. So I want my rock to fly up to the corner and then res is going to go and grab the rock. And then I want the rock to fly down to that corner. So a random spot and if I've caught the rock, then I need to get a point. Change the score by one. Okay. So every time I hit the rock, I want my rock to fly somewhere else. And I want my, I want to get a point. Let's try it. Oh, why are we not working? Hold on a second. If touching robot, let's try again. Hmm. Why is that not working, I wonder? Oh, oh, I need a forever block. See, I messed up my code. You need a forever block because you don't want it to happen just once. You want it to happen over and over again. Okay, let's try it again. Boom. Boom. Three. Oh, I hit the stop button. Whoops, my bad. But you get the idea, right? Fly around the screen. Grab that rock and get as many points as you can in the time. All right. We've got our background. We've got res. We've got a rock. And now we need something to chase me. And what is going to chase Mr. T? Well, there's two options. The first one is we can upload a tornado. Okay. And I've gone ahead and uploaded a tornado right there. All right. Now that tornado is massive. So check this out. We're going to shrink it down, but watch what I can do. I don't want this white background. Okay. I want the background to go. So I'm going to show you really quickly. I'm going to do a bad job at this and you're going to do a better job, but I'm going to show you how to get rid of that white. We're going to go up here and we're going to go to code costumes, code costumes. We're going to grab the eraser and we're going to erase the background. See that? Look at my on my screen. See what's happening? Right? 
There we go. It is slowly leaving. I got to make sure all the white's gone. And you're going to do a better job at this, okay? But there you go. You can see down at the bottom, I've erased my... Let's put it up here so you can see it better. There's my tornado, right? Now, maybe gray on gray is not the greatest thing in the world. Now, I want my tornado to chase res, right? That dust storm is going to be chasing res. Okay, so when the green flag is touched, this is what I want my tornado to do. I want my tornado to follow or chase res. So if res is down here, I want my tornado to fly towards res. But if res flies underneath the bottom, I want my tornado to change direction and always be chasing res. That is what I want my tornado to do. So that means I want my tornado or my dust storm to point, always point toward the robot. And that way, which wherever I put my robot, you see if I put my robot over here, my tornado or my dust storm is always pointing toward res. Okay. Now we want my tornado to move. We want it to be slowly chasing res. And I'm going to show you a way to speed it up or hack the game a little bit. All right. So watch in a few minutes. And then we're going to do one other if then statement. Okay. So point toward the robot, move two steps. All right. And we want that to happen over and over and over, right? All through the game. So watch this. Ready? We're going to go start. Watch this. See? But we haven't done any points yet, right? So I want res to always be moving away from the tornado. But we haven't put in a code where the robot, where res is going to lose points. So let's do that now. Okay, so same as before, my friends, same as before, if touching, this is a great activity for sensor blocks or sensing blocks. If touching robot, if the dust storm catches res, what does res lose? What is res going to lose, my friends? Res is going to lose points or sorry, set score. Actually, no. Okay, there's two ways you can do it. If he catches res, res might lose a point, or let's be really mean and set score back to zero. That's that's not very nice, but let's just go with it. All right. So watch this. Res is down here. He's got one. He's got two. And watch what happens when boom, back to zero, right? Back to zero. Oh, this is a tough game. Back to zero. You could make it, instead of set score, you could do change score. We could totally do that, right? Change the score by minus one. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. That's another way to hack the game, right? Oh, that's such a bully. Look at that. <laughs> Let's... Let's leave that one alone because that's going to drive me crazy. Let's go set score to zero and let's just roll with that. Okay. And there you go, my friends. We have a game. We've got a game built. Congratulations. Okay. Now, what are some ways we can make this game a little bit better? Uh, well, we could speed res up. Instead of res moving that fast, maybe we we'll want to change res to slow them down watch this now watch res that's a lot harder because that tornado is getting like that tornado now has an advantage okay or you could speed res up you could make them faster how about you make the tornado faster you could do that you could change it so that every time the tornado hits res he goes to zero, but every time Res gets a rock, he gets two points. You could totally do that. We could do set score to zero, change points by five, right? How about we try that? Five, 
10, 15, 0, back to 0. We could do that. I don't know. There's lots of different ways to hack the game, right? But that, my friends, is the gist. That's the basics of how you make a chase game, okay? So we have res. We've got a, uh, what do we call them, dust devil. We've got fossils. Res really needs to catch those fossils so that when he goes back to Earth, he'll have something to show Rania and Xander. And that's the gist of the game. Okay. If the game was fun, if the game was helpful, please go ahead and give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If teachers, students, if you want more content on financial literacy, you want more content on coding, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. I'd really appreciate it if you share this video with some friends or a coding class. If there's a coding club at your school, please share the game with, uh, with them. Teachers, if you're going to do Rover Story later in the year or next year, please go ahead and save this game. And teachers, if you want some more content, you can go to my website, Mr. T from P3, go to Rover Story, and I've got for you a drop game that you can play. I've also got the how-to, and I've got coding a book cover down here. All right, so two more coding activities if you want to check that out. It is Mr. T from p3.com and just go to Rover Story and you'll find it. All right. Teachers, I've got a Facebook group you can join. You can find me on YouTube and you can follow me on Twitter if you'd like. And if you want to buy me a coffee, if you love the video, please go ahead and buy the coffee. I'd be grateful for that. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much. And we'll talk to you in the next video. Take care.